Hello, welcome to another edition of Capper Comparison Picks. I'm Rance. Today I'm going to be giving you main card events for UFC Vegas 36 Brunson vs. Till. Um, be sure to check out the videos I've done throughout the week covering all the prelim fights. Well, the five of them. So there's like five fights left. Here's three and then Tomorrow I will do the main and co-main event. But without further ado, let's get right into this as I've had a pretty long day and it's time check. Yeah, it's getting it's getting kind of late. So let's dive into this. Um start off the main card. We've got oh by the way, guys, because uh, a lot of these folks are, I guess this was a. Uh, it was supposed to, this uh, UFC event was supposed to take place in England, but now it's taking place in Vegas. However, to, um, you know, make it easier for the British fans, the start time is one o'clock. I appreciate that myself. I don't like being up, you know, till past midnight to watch, you know, you the main event and stuff. So this would be a nice break from that. One o'clock here would be seven o'clock over there. So that's, you know, prime time, that's that's when uh, they'll be tuning in. But um, yeah, I like that this is gonna be taking place one o'clock p.m. Eastern time on Saturday. All right, anyway, let's get into this. The, uh, to the curtain jerker to the main card, we've got the UFC debut for Patty the Batty Pimblet. He's, uh, he's coming over from the, across the pond. He's um, Cage Warrior, Warriors veteran. Hold on a second. And uh, he comes over, he trains out of Liverpool with like um, Chris Fishgold. I'm sure you might have heard of him, he's a UFC fighter. Anyway, Paddy Pimblett has been on the Cage Warriors scene for quite some time. This is his long-awaited UFC debut. People are saying, or fans have been saying he should have came out a while ago. He does do a lot of uh, talking. I guess he's he's made claims that he's better than Conor McGregor and all sorts of stuff. You know, I like, he's he, he's got that crazy mop haircut and Patty the Batty. You know, how can you not like the guy? Um, he comes in with a record of 16 and three. He's the favorite here, minus 145, training out of next gen. Like I said, next gen MMA, generation MMA in Liverpool. People like Chris Fishgold from there. He's coming off a win against uh, David Martinez, rear naked choke, round one. And he is 26 years old for Paddy Pimblett. His opponent, uh, not new to the UFC. 25 years old, Luigi Vendramini, the Brazilian Italian stallion. I call him the Brazilian Italian stallion because he fights out of Brazil. Actually, um, yeah, he's fighting out of a constrictor team. So he works out, or um, he, can, he trains potentially with uh, Hani Yaya and Hanato Moicano. Not bad training partners, not a bad facility, right? You can't, you can't say it is. He's coming off a loss to uh, Fariz Zayam, a uh, majority, majority decision loss. That means uh, one of the judges um, picked it as a draw, I think, something like that. I think it, it's like, a, um, yeah, it's like two or two judges picked it as a draw and one judge picked it for uh, Fariz Zayam. Why is this a tie? That's called a draw. Why is this a tie? That's what I just said. If it's a tie is called a draw. That's where neither one loses, neither one wins. Okay, but anyway, he lost. Uh, Luigi Render, meaning the tiny saying, lost to Fariz Ziam. Um, he's the underdog here at plus 125. He has a professional record of nine and two. I did notice all his, uh, to him, yeah, I want to say all his nine victories are by way of finish. He has not won a decision. He's 
those two losses, I think, were both by decision. But uh, Benjamin, he, this, the Italian stand, he brings the heat. He brings it. But he's going against uh, Patty the Batty. Patty, now he's uh, he's more of a grappling guy. He's more of a grappling expertise. He's got, um, I'm pretty certain, he's got a BJJ black belt. Benjamin, though, come from the Constrictor team, I would imagine his BJJ is pretty good. His, you know, training out of Brazil, I, I imagine he's pretty good himself when it comes to coming to the ground. But um, I want to pull up his pathology quickly. I have it right up here. I just want to see his past fights. Shouldn't take long, right here. Benjamini, I want to back up what I had to say about him. Yeah, round one knockout, round one knockout. Uh, round three, KO. He's got a submission, punches Kimura, punches. Yeah, so every victory he has, all nine of them by way of finish. Majority by knockout. He's got seven knockouts, two uh, submission wins. The two losses, both of them by decision. So let's see what uh, the cappers have to say about this, starting with the favorite here in Patty the Batty Pimblet from Liverpool. Hello, mate. I don't I can't do it, so whatever. I'm not even trying. We've got um, Artem from Artem MMA Analysis. Artem, he had a uh, for his intro, he had Dennis Bermuda. Yeah, Dennis, Dennis Bermudez. Is that his name? Dennis Benitez. Dennis Benitez. He had a, he had a, a UFC fighter introduce him. Man, I can't. It's right at the tip of my tongue. Once you start recording, man, your mind just goes kind of blank. So I got this piece of paper, but I didn't write it down. But Denny Bermudez, Benitez, something like that was uh, introduced Artem MMA analysis. And Artem is uh, on the side of Patty Pimblet. He thinks Patty's gonna get the submission victory, which could happen, could happen. Um, then we've got uh, Taken Benjamini. What's going on? Lead MMA is taking the Italian Stallion. He says there's a draft, or there's a there's a pretty big difference between Cage Warriors and UFC. Even though Benjamin is UFC, he's only got like the one win in, against Justin Ayari. Uh, uh, is, it, is that his name? Justin Ayari? In the UFC, he does uh, have, and he, he's, his losses, his two losses were against uh, UFC fighters too, but Patty Bimblet. Hasn't seen fighters from the UFC. He's, I mean, he's been in Cage Warriors that whole time. Not, I'm not saying nothing bad about against Cage Warriors. I'm just saying it's, it's a regional scene, you know. Um, draft, draft, is it draft, draft? Difference? I don't know. My head is. Told you, it's a long day at work. I got a lot, a lot. My brain is tired. I need a break. <laughs> then we got MMA fortune teller. The teller, the teller. He's jumping on Patty the Batty. He just thinks he's got, uh, he, the hype is for real. The dude's good, 16 and three. I mean, he does have a better record against, but, but uh, we'll see. Um, then we've got Taken Benjamini. Pub Sports Radio, that's Clint from Clint's Die Hard on a Podcast. His special guest was Matthew Holt, the guy from US Integrity, which Make sure uh, gambling casinos and the book bookies are on point. Not trying to U.S. integrities. Making sure that everything's on the up and up when it comes to gambling. Anyways, Matt Holt and Clint. Uh, Matt Holt already bet. It. He already bet Benjamini as you know as an underdog. Clint is siding with him, but he didn't say he bet it yet. He said he's gonna. He wants to wait until the uh, face-offs, the you know the weigh-ins and face-offs. Bet for Matt Holt. I appreciate that. So that's actually that two cappers there. Okay. So and finally to tie it up, if you will, we've got Greedo plays. Greedo, he's saying Pimblet should get this submission, just like Artem is saying, but he thinks early too against the Italian Stallion. Um, yeah, this is a very interesting fight because Tony's saying 
He's not bad. I mean, he doesn't have a big range of fights to, you know, to measure himself, you know, to measure against. But, uh, I mean, he cut, like I said, all his victories by finish. And he's going to bring it. He's going to bring that forward pressure. Pat, this is uh, Patty the Baddie's hyped up UFC debut. Hyped up. Like he's, you know, this is... A lot of people are, a lot of eyes going to be on this under the big lights in Vegas, not in the UK like he wanted to be. Still a crowd of what, like 500 people, I think. You can buy a ticket for roughly, I looked at the prices today, I think uh, 600 bucks right around there. You can go in the nosebleeds for about 200, I think. I don't know, something like that. But and uh, anyway, um, I, I'm not buying into the hype. You know what? I did. Back in the, I think back when Corona was just like a new thing, I uh, saw Patty Pimblett. This is when I think UFC was shut down, but Cage Warriors still had an event or something. Um, and it was, I saw him fight Decky Dalton, which I thought that guy, that dude's name was cool. I put, I picked Patty Pimblett and I won a little bit of change on that, but, uh, I I don't I I don't know. It's just the competition of Cage Warriors is not up to par with the competition Benjamini's already seen in his UFC. You know, I'm just gonna go with the UFC experience here and the fact that Benjamini is the underdog plus money. I even uh, plussed it out a little bit further. Like I said, Benjamini, all his wins are by finish. I don't really think he's going to get it down to the ground and sub Patty Pimblett because Patty Pimblett, he's known for his grappling, right? And his BJJ, I guess. He's, he does have a black belt. But I think he's going to be, eventually he's going to be able to hold his own on the ground coming that because he's coming from constrictor team, you know? So he's he's got to have some sort of, you know, even if it rubs off on him just through training and practice from the other guys. Uh, Heoni Bar, uh, who was it? No, it's uh, oh, Hanado Moicano, Haniyaya. Come on, he's got, he's got to have. I think his ground game will compete with P Patty Pimblett. His stand up, I think he edges out. Pat. I think he's a better striker. He's gonna bring the pain. He's gonna bring the heat. I think he's gonna get it done within distance. And uh, that is within distance. Plus 250 if you take Benjamini within distance. I know a lot of you guys are going to go against me and take the hype train called Patty the Batty with his moppy haircut and his goofy smile and all that. You know, he's he's, he's likable. Very likable fighter. He's got that quirky nickname, Patty Pimblet, you know, or Patty the Batty. But, uh, yeah, I'm going with my boy, the Italian stallion, Luigi Vendermini. Brazilian, Italian, Stallion. <laughs> so, moving on. Next, we've got the fight between that light heavyweight showdown between Khalil Roundtree, the War Horse. That's his nickname. The War Horse Khalil Roundtree taking on the Baltic Gladiator, Modestus Bukakis. Awesome. Awesome fight. I, I'm looking a lot. I'm looking forward to it a lot. Um, Bukakis comes in as the favorite. The line didn't move much. Is at minus 152. He's got a record of 11 and 4. Uh, pretty good for the for the Baltic Gladiator. Roundtree is coming in with a professional record of 8 and 5. He's the underdog at plus 132. Roundtree's got the, you know that whole. He lived in Thailand to train MMA and stuff and all that good good cheer going around him. But, uh, I don't know, as of late, not looking so hot. Coming off a unanimous decision loss to Marcin Procneo. He's actually, he's two and three in his last five for Khalil Roundtree. Two and three in his last five. Um, he was training out of the Juan fight team. That's uh, Vanderlei Silva's team. In Vegas, he's still in Vegas, but he has since switched school, switched 
training facilities. Now he's training out of Syndicate MMA, which is a, a better school. I would I, a training better training facility. I would say, in my opinion, than the Wand Fight Team. Not saying anything against the axe murder of Vanderlei Silva, but I'm just saying. Okay. Um. The favorite though, Modestus Bukalkis. He's also coming off a loss to uh, Michael Olazacek, a split decision loss. And Michael Olazacek is, I mean, he, he's, he's decent. I think uh, this is his second loss to the dude, or the first time it was a no contest. I don't know, but anyway, uh, Modesto Bukakis is three and two in his last five. A little bit better than two and three, right? The Lithuanian trains out of England, of course. Uh, he trains, he has two gyms listed. One is called Blood, Sweat, Tears. The other one's called Jintas Combat. And both of them are out of England. He's got a two inch height and four inch reach advantage over Khalil Roundtree. And the guy is a tad bit younger being 27 years old. Khalil Roundtree is 31. So not a big age discrepancy, but nonetheless, a slight one. Okay, now let's see what these cappers have to say in this very interesting fight. I want to speak. I want to say, um, Clear Roundtree. There's like, I'm not, you know, I, I'm saying this because I'm biting off of what other cappers have said. More than one capper said. He comes in. You don't know which Clear Roundtree you're gonna get. If you get the one that was training Muay Thai in Thailand. That, then you're going to get a good one, a good Khalil Roundtree. But if you get the one that uh, lost to Marcin Procneo, you're going to get a lousy one. And that one, I guess if you watch the fight, he shows no will to, like, he the, the, does he still want to compete? And does he, does he want to be a Muay Thai kickboxing guy over in Thailand? Or does he want to be an MMA fighter? Hey, stop. I guess his his will and drive to win, you don't see it in that fight against Procneo. So I don't, I'm not, uh. however, he does have that first round knockout power for, you know, uh, this is, this is going to be an interesting fight. I don't like picking this one, but, um, so that's why I'm going to lean on which way the cappers are going. So let's see, we've got taken Modestus Bukalkis, the favorite here. We've got Greedo from Greedo Plays. I have these two kittens and they are everywhere. They're getting into everything. Uh, Greedo is saying by decision. Then we've got um, MMA Fortune Teller. Also, Taken Bukalkis. We've got what's going on. Bleed knows the deal. This is Bleed is one of the guys that said, which Khalil Roundtree you gonna get? You get the good one, then he should roll over Bukalkis. But he said, it's kind of like a Ovin St. Pru. You don't, if you get the good one, if you get him when he's good and hot, he can beat anybody. But if you get the bad one, you're, He's, he can lose to anybody. He's like, there's no middle line. It's either bad or good, and it's a gamble on which one's gonna come to the show. However, Modestus Bukalkis, you can rely on him being game every time he comes into that ring. He has, this is, this is coming from Bleed. This is what he said. He's got, you can, like, statistically, he goes in there and he's never had that fight where it doesn't look like he has the will to win. I don't know, it's not word for word, but kind of like that. And he's not the only one that said it. There's other cappers that are not presented on the show that also said the same thing. I think maybe even MMA Fortune Teller, he might have said this shit too. Greedo might have said the same thing. But the fact is, you don't know which round you're going to get. Um, Artem, Artem MMA Analysis, he's got Bukalkis, and he's saying by knockout. Now that's bold. That's bold against the uh, round tree, Khalil round tree. However, it's not a full capper consensus because 
We have the contrarian pickers. Pub. Sports. Radio. Clint. Clint said in this position he's going dog or pass. This is a D or P position spot for him. Dog or pass. Matt, pretty much the same thing. He's more leaning to the pass. <laughs> he's not taking dog. He's 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 not this he's leaning round tree only because he's the dog underdog but his bet on this fight is going to be the over so I might as well put that there too so this is my deal here you know I love plus money I'm addicted to it plus money junkie right plus money junkie but I gotta use my head here and I'm going to take, uh, I think Bukalkis is like more s stable, like well-rounded. He's a tad bit better on the ground. When I it comes didn't see enough plus money. I just see minus. I know. That's, I, I'm trying to cut the... Um, don't cut your doll's hair. No, I'm not. I'm trying to cut the rubber band. I'll help you after I'm done with this video. Go on. Okay. I don't think those get cut, Nora. That's why they're... Tie the knots like that on purpose. You don't want to cut them out, it's going to look stupid. Or go in the other room. Okay. Anyway, I'm also going to take the favorite here. I think Bukowskis, Bukowskis is just better all, all around, like uh, on the ground, standing up, striking. However, I think he's going to just, if he gets out of the first round with Roundtree, if he gets out of that first round, Roundtree does have an advantage when it comes to clinch, kickboxing, Muay Thai. But uh, I don't think it's going to have to go to that. I think he's going to gas. I think his cardio is going to fade. He's, he is like, if you look at the guy, he's got a lot of mus muscular, he's got a muscular build. And muscles take oxygen, take up that needs blood flow. Those guys, they gas a little bit. Uh, and Bukakis, he's taller, lengthier, leaner. Leaner, he's not as compact and tight. So I think his cardio is gonna get him past, he's gonna keep within distance, get past that first round. Second round, I think he's gonna take it to him. Third round, I think he's gonna edge out, this, he's got the strike, significant strikes, probably outstrike the guy. Get uh, more significant strikes, better percentage, look better for the judges, and get a decision victory. I'm gonna go with Modestus Bukalkis by decision. And yes, I looked the prop up because plus money. Look, look at this. Bukalkis by decision plus right here plus four hundred. It depends, it depends on how much you want to bet. If you bet $100, you win $400 if you win, plus your $100 back. But if you bet $100 and he loses, then you lose $100. Or $10. $10 is half a unit to daddy. $10 and I put it on Bukakis to get decision victory, I win $40 and my $10 back. But if he loses to Khalil Roundtree, who might be worth a little hedge bet uh, KO in the first. I don't know what the odds are on that. But that might be a little worth a sprinkle, maybe a quarter of a unit, like five bucks or something. Just a hedge. Because that would be, I think, his route to victory. But I'm going to go with Bukalkis by decision for plus $400. Moving on. Next, we have another good fight. This one's probably one of the toughest ones. This, all three of these fights were very tough to pick for me. Very, I, I would have thought this one was going to be a little bit closer, but, and this one is just, it, it's actually tied because Pub Sports Radio is two people. Now we got this one. We've got David Zawada, Sagat. He's from the video game Street Fighter, Sagat, Sagat. He's the Russian guy with the hairy chest and everything, right? Or is that? No, that's Zhang Leaf, and that's from Sagat is from Street Fighter One, and he's like, uh, man, he's 
yeah, I think, I don't know, I can't remember. I, I want to know, I, I want to say he's like a big, muscular dude. I forget, whatever, the video game. Anyway, David Zawada Saget is uh, the underdog here, plus 113. That line moved substantially. It used to be a plus 155. That's right. That means money's been coming in on the dude, Zawada. Alex Morono, 19 and 7. He's a minus 133. This was a minus 180. That's how big of a favorite he was. But money's coming. Money moved the lines. Either a whale or a lot of bets. The public. Something. Something put money on Zawada to cause that to jump down. It was minus 180. And this to jump from a plus jump also down from plus 150 you know real big line jerk there um okay david zawada 31 alex morono 31 not not even writing it they're both the same age okay david zawada is coming off a split decision loss to ramazan emiev however before that he had a fabulous fabulous triangle submission First round against a Nurmagomedov. Abu Bakar Nurmagomedov. Probably of the Nurmagomedovs I know, probably the worst of the three. I, three or four of them, right? I don't know. But Abu Bakar, I think it's, it's, uh, it's the uh, cousin to Khabib. So anyway. Uh, David Zawada has a one inch height and three inch reach advantage. Nothing big there. Here's, here's a key though. He was fighting out of Dusseldorf, Germany, a gym called UFD Gym. It's, you can't even click it on Tapology, it's blacked out. Now, from what I've learned from the cappers, David Zawada training out of American Top Team in Coconut Creek, one of the best training facilities in the entire country. That's right. American Top Team, Coconut Creek, Florida. The American Top Team. However, his opponent, Alex Morono. Alex Morono, the uh, great white, fighting out of Fortis MMA. People have a lot of mixed, mixed opinions about Fortis MMA, but you gotta consider Fortis MMA out of Texas. Um, they have people like, uh, Training partners such as winning training partners as of recently, Abdul Razak Al Hassan, you know him, he fights out of there. Um, Diego Fajera fights out of there, Jeff Hands of Steel Neil fights out of there, and uh, Ricky Tercios, the ultimate fighting champ from last weekend, also trains and fights out of Fortis MMA, the home of Alex Morono, and Alex Morono also. Gracie Barra Wood, Woodlands with Ricky Tercios, or Tercios is with him. Alex Morono coming off a win, but it was against like an aged old cowboy, Donald Cowboy Cerrone. Uh, he knocked him out first round though. Getting it done, getting it done right. What do you expect from the guy? He didn't, he just, he didn't choose the matchup. He, he just accepted it, you know, and he went in there and took care of business. People were fading him because it was, it was just against Cowboy. So what, still a fight, still, and he still knocked him out first round, what else would you want from the guy? So, Alex Morono, um, 19 and seven, BJJ Black Belt, and the favorite, like I said, it was minus 180, now it's minus 133, because I think a lot of people are seeing that Abu Bakar Vic victory against Abu Bakar Nuragamedov by triangle choke. So everybody's like, oh, David Zawada must have great. The casuals must are saying David Zawada must have great BJJ. You know, and if, and if you look at the side by side picture, David Zawada's cut up a little bit more. Morono's got kind of a dad body kind of. He you can't see his abs. He's still he's not you know out of shape or nothing. He, I think he's still in fine shape, but. Zawada is more defined and more cut and ripped to the eyes. So I think casuals look at the side to side like, oh, muscles is going to be not muscles. You know, I'm just saying that could have moved the line shift too. 
I don't know, I'm just talking out my ass, just talking out loud. But anyway, David Zawada, Sagat. Oh, I'm gonna start with Morono since he is the favorite here. Great White, Alex Morono. Taking him, we've got the MMA Fortune Teller. He believes Morono should get the victory here. Also, uh, Greedo. Greedo plays. Greedo is calling it a knockout in the second. Uh, what's going on, Bleed? Also taking Great White. And again, Artem is saying by decision for Morono. However, once again, it is not a full cap for consensus because Pub Sports Radio took the underdog on all three of these fights. All of them. Clint and Matt Holt both in agreement on all these fights and taking the underdog on all these fights. Did they say method? They did not, they, but they're both Clint and Matt both on the side of Zawada from, I think it's because of that impressive triangle choke. And I think it's because plus money. However, I'm gonna go with my boy, great white Alex Morono. I, I'm kind of high on Morono. I like Alex Morono. I, I've taken him a couple times. I did take him in a loss though. Who was that against? I'm not gonna pull it up right now, but Actually, why not? Why not? Uh, um, I took him to get the win against Al Cerrone, which was good, but I also took him and I lost money on him. When it, let's see right here. Yeah, he's uh, he's one of those pattern fighters. Win, loss, win, loss. Yeah, against uh, Anthony Pettis. I took him to get the victory and he lost a unanimous decision against Anthony Pettis. But uh, yeah, and you know what? The win-loss, win-loss pattern, he's coming off a win, so this one he should be on a loss. But I, I don't buy into that crap. I, I like uh, Morono's confidence going into this fight. I like that he's coming, that win, I think he's coming off good confidence. That win was a, that Cowboy Cerrone, Cowboy Cerrone, I know he's old and everything, but he's a legend. He's, everybody knows who he is. Alex Cerrone knocked him out first round. So yeah, I'm going with Great White here. And um, I'm going to have to take, um, I don't think he's going to finish David Zawada. David Zawada is durable, man. I like David Zawada, too. Don't get me wrong. For, I like the German. Plus, I like that he's at American Top Team. But I'm taking Morono. I think he's going to get a decision victory. I did check out the odds on that, and it's cropped out. Not much, but plus money, plus 150 by decision. That's my pick, and I'm sticking to it. So, two. Recap! Time check! What is the time check? Oh man, I'm over, going over a little bit. I try to keep each fight breakdown to about 10 minutes apiece. So then every show is roughly a half hour. This one's a little bit over. But anyway, to recap, I've got Luigi Benjamini, the Brazilian Italian Stallion, getting the victory over Patty the Batty Pimblet within distance. I know he I don't, he has not been finished yet, but uh, I like Vendramini, that Vendramini goes do or die. He goes out there, all his victories are by decision. I mean by finish. So, do or die. Well, not, it's not do or die because he lost, his two losses are the uh, decision. But uh, anyway, you get my drift. I like Vendramini in this fight. I think Pimblet, I like the hype. I like the hype train. I just don't like how everybody has got him favored against the guy that's already been in the UFC for a bit. Then I have Modestus Bukakis, the Baltic Gladiator, getting it done by decision over Clear Roundtree. I think after the first round, he's after the danger zone. 
he's going to have uh, a better gas tank, better cardio, and like I said, I think he edges him out everywhere he takes the fight, except for clinch Muay Thai. But if he goes to the ground, Bukakis. Striking, regular striking, Bukakis. That's why I'm giving him the decision victory. Yeah, Plus 400, that's fine. And finally, great white Alex Morono. Um, same, like, uh, I, same reasons, I think he's better, come on, Nor. He's better all, um, in pretty much every aspect of the fight. Yeah, you don't see his BJJ black belt at work a lot. He likes to stand and bang. He likes to do that, and I think he's gonna outstrike. I think he's a better striker than Zawada, and I think he's gonna outstrike him here. And I think he's gonna get the decision victory too. I think it's a plus one fifty decision. That's I'm happy with that. So gather the info, place those bets, and cash those. <laughs> Yes. That's right. Thanks for watching. Be sure to give me that thumbs up. Um, go ahead and fill the comments with who you guys think are going to win these three fights. I'm interested to see every take on this. You know, I am a Capra comparison guy, so I compare everybody's picks and I talk me into flipping. I mean, hopefully I'll be able to do a live stream with somebody this week so I don't have to do it by myself. But uh, anyway... These are subject to change after I watch the face-offs weigh-ins. I've taken up too much time, so good luck on these bets, and I'll see you tomorrow for the main and co-main event. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.